unless somebody really got injured, you couldn't um, change a game. Once you beat your top seven, that was it for the whole match. So I've seen all the changes, but we're still struggling. This is the first time that you could actually replace a player if they were deemed to be unfit due to injury. It's never been before, so small steps, I guess. Hopefully that might come down the track. A disappointing win today, maybe to start with that. Uh, yesterday we drew and it felt like we won. But today I think uh, at half time, especially, we, I thought we came back really strong. Um, we had a nice lead for such a great side in our team to actually maintain you know, what we've done. So I think that I have to say that was quite disappointing to see us, ourselves letting it go. Uh, but yeah, we definitely would love to be in the semi final. And um, in our circles, we were talking with the girls, we were like, nothing is um, impossible. When we went in today, we thought, we're just going to give it a crack and see how far we can go with it. And at halftime, I have to say, it felt like we still have a chance. You always have a chance until you don't have. And at this stage, it's yeah, quite disappointing. But really, I think more than anything, we have to focus on actually maybe keeping our ranking, because you kind of is really good. If we have to come up against them again, they're going to come hard. And I think today they showed us that uh, we can step up and actually want to grab a win. So we need to focus on actually maintaining that now. Oh, Captain, my Captain, I wish you knew just how proud we were of you. We were all hoping for a semi-final, right? But unfortunately, these things don't play out the way we want them to. Particularly even the fact that, Alsha, I can't believe it. You guys only had seven players going to the World Cup and that was it. What if there was an injury? Yeah, I think that was a long time ago, not when I played. <laughs> <laughs> So when we when I played, we were 12, you know, so like, just for the record. Oh, uh, Norma, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's crazy. So it was 12 still. Yes. But tell me, what do you think about it, especially with Fred coming through and saying that he doesn't like it, especially the fact that someone needs to be injured, they can't just be sick. What do you say about it? Yeah, I think there's two arguments for that. First of all, I think it's such a, such a spectacle. And, you know, people invest a lot of money in events like this. Mm. And to not have a full team of 12 players that can contest it, it's just not good for the game. And it's not good for the performance level that you want. Mm. So I think that's the one side of it, which is the side that I support. I think you should make the hands of a coach really strong and allow her to have a full squad to compete. Yeah. And then there's the, on the other hand, because not all the countries that here have the money to come out here with 15. So they're only here with 12. So if there is an injury, so it just makes the gap between the, the top five or six so much bigger than the rest. Fair. And then that is not fair. Yeah. So I think that's the two sides of the coin and you have to find a, maybe a golden midway in between of that. But I, but I do believe that if you, if you can have a full squad, uh, that will be good. Lots of people say that's part of coaching and the challenge of a coach to manage your squad. And yeah. if there's an injury, you know, when you did select your squad, did you make sure that you covered all your bases? Did you cover your what ifs? And you have to cope with that. I remember there was a World Cup where New Zealand actually lost three shooters in one game. No way. And they couldn't replace. You know, and that's not what you want. They, they, they won that semi, they went into the final, but they lost that final by 20 goals. And the media and everybody was all over that team, but you should have actually applauded them for getting to this, a final and then obviously losing that far but what can you do you can do only so much and what can you do especially with something like yesterday where unfortunately you know the team couldn't go back and change things joe speak to me about this yes south africa is disappointed with how they played yesterday but i also know that there are a lot of teams that are feeling the very same way the likes of australia having lost to england history for the very first time ever in the world cup and even the likes of new zealand drawing to south africa who's supposed to be number five tell us about what you think in terms of the international teams not to as great as they wanted to in terms of those ranking at the top but not just talking about the top six but also looking at the other teams as well it is quite clear throughout this entire week and the world cup that Nepal is a game of two halves mm. so we had teams starting off quite strong you know getting that huge lead and then coming into the second half losing it and suddenly making uncharacteristically forced errors but this is a World Cup, it's back-to-back -back games, it's every day, yeah. it changes things, you know. Having been on the court every single day, you drop concentration, you drop focus, and mm. it goes down to conditioning, it goes down to consistency and the inches. We always talk about the inches. So in a game of Nepal, that's 60 minutes, you can have a great first half, first quarter, second quarter, but if you come back in that championship quarter in the third one, and the other team comes back with more energy mm. you know then you're playing a bit of a different ball game and if you didn't have a big enough lead you can lose that in the second half just like we did yesterday 
Yeah. And that's the thing. So if you don't have a strong start, you're going to play a catch-up game, which makes it more difficult in the second half. But if you have that inch, that gap, you can make it up and that can change the whole dynamic. So playing a full 60 minutes, that's yeah. what's going to be needed. And especially today against Tonga, they have experience in that team. Yes, they may not be as young or as fast as the Proteas, yeah. but they have experience, they are wise, and a lot of them have played in World Cups and won World Cups before. Sure. So that's something a lot of people don't know, and we're going to talk about it right after the beautiful break we're about to take. I call it beautiful because we need to get ourselves ready for what is coming. Tonga, number seven in the world, taking on South Africa, number five. And this right here is where you are watching it on SABC2. Do not go anywhere. Our girls are amazing, they're doing an amazing job, and we're going to win. We are so Job, and we're gonna win. We are so proud of the she cranes, it's our star, and we are going to win. But we've got a very young team. We had a number of our senior players from 2019 retire, and I think the girls have been they've done very well. They should be very proud of themselves. They've worked really hard to get to this point. In fact, one of the greatest things that happened to the East African region is Kenya being awarded the wooden plank for. We are now going to hold several regional uh, tournaments and we shall use that floor because it is now of international standards. Do you understand why you had to be on SABC2, my friend? We get you ministers, we get you World Cup winning captains. This is exactly where you belong and this is all in the name of us following the campaign of the Spa Proteas in the 2023 Netball World Cup. Ladies, we're literally jumping to the match in a little bit against Tonga. Speak to me about what you just said now, now, uh, beautiful Joe. I said that you said that we are having even World Cup winning players in this match. Who are you talking about? Yeah, I was referring to Gerard there. Um, she played for the diamonds for Australia and they won the World Cup and then also we have Lata there she has represented three different countries now first she had Samoa and then New Zealand and now here with Tonga mm. and what's great about it it's in different um, sides of the court so we have a leader there in the shooting position and then on the defensive side so just having those people direct the play we can see when they're playing that they mm. are guiding them especially mm. Gerard she's very vocal about it and she's setting up those defensive structures and having that wisdom and that experience, it does play a big role in a game as ne like netball because then you start playing differently. You don't then play with the physical speed and, you know, really going with it with the body, but you start playing with the mind. Yeah. And you can outsmart certain players on court because we do have um, less experienced players in the Protea setup. Yeah. And the thing about experience is that when it comes to the top, oh honey, it remembers and it does what it needs to do. Alsha, speak to me very quickly about what exactly we're going to 
we are talking about our starting lineup, we're seeing the Tonga family over there just getting into it and warming up. What do you say? Yeah, I think South Africa's starting lineup, you know, the coach has referred to a lot of performance based selection. And I think this is our strongest seven. She's starting with Ina Marie on shooter with Nicole Talyard. Mm -hmm. I think they've been good to us, they've been solid. Uh, and then they have Bongi on the wing attack with his head in the middle. I think both of them has find their connection and they're connecting really well with the shooters as well. Yeah. Um, and then on the, at the back, John Tay Stradum running the wing attacks down, putting a lot of like Joe also referred to it e earlier, doing that mid-court defense that we want with his head, that's height, that's strength. Yeah. And then we have Carla and Pumza at the back. So there's good connectedness all over the court. We have a rest day tomorrow, so I would really like to see that we can push really hard and see how far this combination can take us yes. and make sure that we go into that last day on that five and six playoff with a lot of confidence. 100% and confidence is what we need. This is why you need to stick around. We told you, you are the eighth player. In fact, it wasn't me that said it, it was the Spa Proteus and do the right thing. Ladies, we want to know very quickly, very quickly, predictions for the score. What do you say, Alsha? Proteus with more than 20. Oh, more than 20? Okay, um, if they keep the, co the combination like it is with that yes. and push with it, I'll say 22. I love <laughs> it. Let's go to the game. <laughs> The Nepal World Cup action continues at the Cape Town International Convention Center, which is home to this uh, global showpiece in the Nepal world. We are in the Mother City with uh, so much to offer from beautiful landscapes to the towering iconic mountain ranges and untouched wilderness that spans right across the Mother City. And uh, that's where the Nepal World Cup action has been taking place as we enter day eight of the tournament. And to close us off then on day eight, uh, two teams that will be taking to court the Spa Proteas coming back and uh, lots of excitement and confidence given their confidence against, well, the result against Uganda rather. And uh, they're going to be looking to take that to court this evening. The crowds have made their way, excited to witness another day of action as they're here to support their favorites, their icons, that will be taking to court shortly. So that's what will be coming up shortly. South Africa against uh, Tonga in uh, the second uh, playoff match as the teams are searching for that uh, top spot in the fifth to the eighth positional placements, which is ultimately what's at stake in this encounter. We saw the Tonga side making the way to the venue earlier on, excited and uh, taking confidence from the encounter against uh, Malawi Queens yesterday. And they're going to be looking to take all of that energy into this battle, which is an uphill against the Spa Proteas. Joining me in commentary, Zanalem Dotana. Zan, always a pleasure to have you alongside. And uh, what an exciting match it is. Looking at the Proteas also coming into the venue, excited and high in confidence. 
high in confidence they should be semi after that nail-biting match against the Ugandan she cranes last night just edging them there by two points the spa proteas so this is where things were in uh, pool f uh, tonga closing off in that uh, fourth position they cross over then to play the spa proteas who were in a pool g and uh, they closed off then in the third place in pool g so it is the final playoff and uh, from here onwards whoever comes out victorious in this encounter will be backing it off for that fifth or sixth position against uganda come sunday the 6th of august gotta tell you tonga spectators have been remarkable throughout the week have really battered some of their favorites now looking at uh, how they were lining up zanele no start for palavi today yeah, but a start for Tuivati, the experience that she's bringing in that shooting circle, combining there on the goal attack with Hansen. Key is going to be that center court player in Veve, who's the captain of this Tonga side, highly reliant on her there in the midcourt. And then obviously Iongi and Faya um, Anuku there defensively. Well, uh, we did hear from the skipper of the Tonga side, uh, Hulita Veve. Let's hear her thoughts. Need a tough contest lies ahead, a team that's only lost once in this World Cup. How have you prepared? Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be a tough one, especially the home team. Um, so we've done some PA and we've worked on our game, so we're just hoping to stick to the game plan and hope it goes well for us. You won that fourth quarter in your game yesterday. Some positives to be drawn there. What are you hoping to do more of to get the results? Yeah, definitely some positives to take away from our loss yesterday. Um, I think it's just that full court defence and full court attack for the full 60 minutes. And if you're looking at where you think you can get the advantage over South Africa, where are you hoping to expose some frailties? I think it's all over the court. I think we're a bit of an unknown team and sometimes you don't know what to expect from us. And I think that we've got to take that to our advantage and take that to South Africa today. Thank you so much. All the best for the game. Thank you. So there's the captain of uh, Tonga talking about the small victories, the small wins from uh, the encounter against Malawi yesterday that they will take into this encounter. They do have some seasoned players, Kat Tuvaiti, who's going to be instrumental in that uh, shooting circle, working alongside uh, Marie Hansen. It's quite a dynamic uh, shooting combination. Very dynamic indeed. They also have Pallavi sitting on the bench that they, you know, they also can call upon in that shooting position for Tonga. Then taking a look at what the spa approaches will be starting with. The coach Norman Plummer going with the usual suspects there. No surprises. Uh, Fenter, Taliat in the shooting circle. Msomi, Crystal in the center. The three at the back there, Straydorn, Pretorius. And the go-to goal in that defensive circle, Pumza Maweni. And uh, we did catch up with Izet Crystal, the engine of the spa approaches in midcourt. Let's find out her thoughts ahead of this encounter. I'm sure you must be disappointed in missing out at the semi-final, but a chance to finish higher, but you have to get past Tonga. Definitely. I mean, we're very disappointed about that loss against New Zealand. It was so close and we almost had it. We gave it our everything, but now it's next job. So tonight we're taking Tonga and we need to finish strong to get ready and to get into that game for fifth and sixth position. And we're definitely going for fifth, so we're giving it our everything. How important is it going to be for you to be clinical in this game and to finish as high as possible considering that there's some players who might retire at the end of this World Cup? Um, I mean, we literally just need to minimise on the areas that's been happening the past few games. There's always going to be areas, but the more we can minimise that, the better. And just to focus on the basics, to keep it short and sharp on our game plan. And the better we can get on that, the more confident we will also feel going into that game on Sunday. Um, so yeah, we, we really need to finish strong. It doesn't matter who's playing or who's on the bench or whatever. But um, yeah, we just need to focus on the on the game plan. And yes, there is players finishing at the end. Um, but yeah, we need to set the standard. It doesn't matter who steps in and take take that bit from you. Or, um, if it's now, or if it's in three months, or whenever, um, we need to play according to that standard. And yeah, make South Africa proud. Thank you. Thanks so much. Well, that uh, is it, Chrisel. Uh, and uh, talking about sticking to the game plan, I mean, they've done a phenomenal job, Zanele. You know, and that's always almost like a sounding board, the benchmark that they have to execute. How well do you think they're going to be able to do so up against Tonga? 
Well, they certainly need to do a very good job in doing that. Yesterday, they had a brilliant start in that first half, but then they let it slip in the second half, allowing Uganda to come back. So I think Coach Norman Palmer will be looking that today they have a clinical performance for 60 minutes. So that's what it's all going to boil down to. 60 minutes of consistency, grit, and uh, BMT to make sure that uh, they do come out victorious in the end. We've seen in this World Cup anything's possible. So you've got to give it everything that you've got. As we welcome then the Tonga side onto the court. Head coach um, for Tonga, Jaguar Pori Makia Simpson. Ladies and gentlemen, Tonga! They really have had an incredible campaign and now let's this season. They came in ranked seventh from a Nepal, well, World Nepal rankings. And uh, this is uh, going to be the highest finish just considering where they are at the moment. Spot Proteus also take to court. And uh, there's uh, the lady Plama. that's at the Ladies forefront, South Africa. Norma Plama. Uh, one of the most uh, celebrated and renowned uh, coaches across the globe. So umpires then today will be Kate Mann, Ken Metakingi, and the third umpire is Kate Wright. So we're all ready and set for the final match of day eight. Tonga up against the Spa Proteas. And Hulita Veve of Tonga gets us underway. Oh, that's good defensive work from the Spa Proteas, but it does find Tuvati, who sinks in her first goal. I can tell you one thing, Simi. One matchup I'm looking forward to is the Pumza Maweni and Tuivati. We know that Tuivati is very dynamic. It's got all the skill sets, brings that flavor, and just, you know, such unpredictability in that shooting circle for Tonga. See how Pumza Maweni has really been playing exceptionally well for the spot approaches defensively how she's going to manage all of that yeah so that's definitely where the fireworks are going to be coming from but uh, so spot approaches also cracking that scoreboard with a first goal of the day talking about cracking things we've got Vanessa marie de toy cracking the whip uh, court side and she's going to be keeping us abreast of all the action that is uh, taking place on her side of the world Vanessa, how are things going there Hey Simi, I can barely hear you. The crowd is absolutely on fire. But talking of heat, I mean, what we're seeing on court at the moment is also really absolutely lit. I'm very excited for this game. I think both of these teams have grown exponentially throughout this World Cup. Tonga really improving with every single game and obviously a lot to play for South Africa today. A lot to play indeed for the spa approaches. We heard this, uh, um, is it Hussle saying that she the goal or the objective for this game is for the spa protesters to stick to their game plan, run, work through their systems. They are looking to meet Uganda in that fifth and sixth playoff. And we know what happened last night against Uganda. The spa protesters just winning that one by two. And Uganda today against Malawi were really outstanding. So it's going to be important for the spa protesters to just have a clinical performance for 60 minutes. And so far it is Tonga that edge ahead by a single point. But it's still early stages. Both teams just sussing each other out. It's the first time they're meeting in a World Cup stage. So lots of unknowns. They would only have had time to analyze each other from uh, previous encounters. But uh, this is the real test of how far they can stretch each other. You'll see me the first time that these two are taking court against each other at a World Cup. Both of them really have short and sharp style of play when it comes to attack. So having trained with your own attacking side, it would be interesting for the defense to see how they counter that short, sharp movement from both the teams. I think it's something they used to. They train like this. 
Now it's just about execution. Execution is going to be key and also how they, you know, just don't fall for the tricks of Tuivati in that shooting circle. We know that she's got a couple of tricks always up her sleeve. That dynamic play that she brings into the shooting circle. The no-look passes. Talia to Tifenta. It's also a combination for me that's really growing with every game that they're playing. They really have such a good understanding. But Fenta, oh, does well though. Does well to fight for that rebound and sinks it then for the Spa Proteas. Oh, that was very lucky because goalkeeper Faungavano, she really had a good reach on that ball. And at the end of the day, the ball actually hit the post and got Inamiti Fenta another opportunity. But it was really good from Lucy on that occasion. Oh, look at the way they're transitioning on the attack, the Spa Proteas. But look at the defence then from Tonga, just slowing them down, not allowing them to get into that goal third as efficiently as they would want to. I mean, Vebe did speak to it during the pre-match interview that they went back, they looked at how, you know, the spa approaches are playing and they've done some assessments on, on individuals and they are obviously the unknown to the spa approaches. So they're going to use that to their advantage today. Yeah, and they're also going to use... Um, the fact that Fenter is relying on that second attempted goal to their advantage, the Tonga side, she needs to make them count. She has to sink them in from the word go. There's no room for error at this World Cup. And so it's very uncharacteristic for Fenter to miss shots from that range. I mean, she's one of the far range shooters we've got in our in, in, in the Spa Protea side. She just needs to back herself and settle in. Uh, after those missed attempts from Fenter, I just glanced over to Norma Plum and she was scratching her head. And you could see a little bit of a frustration from her because I think you, as a starting lineup, you've got a lot of res responsibility. And oh, Nicole Talliard, that feed between two defenders, so seamless. I think it could cut Poloni. It was so good. <laughs> but in a minute, Fenter will need to make sure that she gets those first attempts ball in because. We saw what happened in the game against Uganda. If she's not going to do that, she will be replaced by p possibly uh, Van der Berg. And on the side of Tonga, then the quick transition on the attack. So seamless, smooth. Two balls into the shooting circle. Spa Proteas had a brilliant defensive structure and set up yesterday against Uganda. And I'd love to see them revert to that the moment. They're just allowing the attack of Tonga to flow. I mean, talk us through that uh, structure, Zanelli, for somebody that perhaps uh, did not witness it. What is it that the Spa Proteas applied and uh, how well did that work? And, I mean, could it work against Tonga? Most definitely. I mean, they were hands over and it started right from the top, you know, quite deep. And they were pressing uh, Uganda in the midcourt. They struggled to penetrate the goal third. It was hands over. Everybody was working. And at the moment... There's a bit of a free flow. Oh, the vision from Veve to Hansen. Can she sink it? Yes, she does. South Africa. Oh, this is a great job being done by Tonga. They retain the one goal lead. I mean, they're making the movement and transition into that goal shooting third. So swift. Each doing their own, covering the space, opening it up. That's what seems to be working for Tonga. I mean, we must also just ask the question, you know, the Spa Proteas had that crack of a game against New Zealand where it ended up in a draw. You know, the players gave so much and everything in that game. And then the following day, they had, a, I mean, a really tight one against Uganda. So from a conditioning perspective, the bodies, the legs, you know, they're starting to maybe, you know, just uh, give like in, that. if I can put it that way. Because now they've been asked again, you know, to really show up and they need to have a 60-minute performance here to be able to walk away with the win against Tonga. Oh, yeah, the miscommunication. That, that is a valid point indeed as we see a misplacement from the spot Proteas. They need to defend that ball, turn it back into their favour and Trissel charging ahead. 
But uh, it was just uh, slightly delayed in terms of her timing. I mean, these are just not the stats we've come to see from the spa purchase from a shooting perspective. Benta sitting on 63 and Taliot on 50. Definitely not good numbers for the spa purchase combination. Well, you spoke to it a little earlier on, you know, just talking about the quick turnaround that these players have had to do given the intensity of the matches. And they're really, I think, you know, just one rest day in between does start to take a toll. So they've got to, you know, just keep pushing and chipping away. And unfortunately, Fentier again, not able to make it count. Uh, I can see Norman Plummer just having a chat to Nicole Kuzak, the specialist shooting coach of the Spa Proteas. Could a change be coming in here in the shooting circle? And where would the change come from, Zanele? Looking at what they've got on the bench. Yeah, well, definitely Van der Berg. Yeah, we see her standing up. She's going to be warming up Van der Berg. She'll come in on the goal shooter, that's for sure, to combine there with Taliat. They're also a very good combination. It's young, it's unknown, it's dynamic. And Van der Berg, for me, I feel that her specialist position is goal shooter. She struggles a bit on the goal attack, but once you put her in that shooting circle, and she's got range as well, so that could be maybe the possible change from the Spa Proteus. Yep, I see behind the bench, Almaray is warming up and doing it viciously, so I do think we might see a change in this first quarter already. I think Norma Plummer has given some opportunity for those goal shooters in anybody Fenter just to settle in that first attempt, but you need to be able to... Oh, great pick up by Bongi and Sormi. Sorry, I'm interrupting myself here because the game is so exciting. Anybody Fenter will need to make sure that you get those first opportunities. She's standing on nine attempts, only managed to sink five of those which is, gives her 55 percent and on this level unfortunately not desired nicole talyard as well maybe it's the post i don't know Zanelli. I, maybe it's the post <laughs> I don't, i'm not quite sure what's going on it's, it also cannot be a lack of concentration at this level you really got to step on court and show up right from the word go they're giving too many opportunities to the tongan defenders it's better play from the spa pro tiers Direct play straight under the post for Talia. She sinks it then. That should be a good confidence booster. Yeah, there was a much uh, better pa passage of play from the spot Proteus. As the uh, score is evened out at the moment. And look at that Pumza Maweni getting a steal. Oh, that's what she does so well. She reads those flies out the circle. Pumzamai Weni doing well. She timed it well. I thought for a moment there the crystal will be called for a replay. Oh, and there's Ina Marie Fente calling for time. The change is going to happen for the spa purchase. Van der Berg then comes in on the goal shooter position. Oh, crowd appreciating that. They've seen Elmare van der Berg in action. They know what she can offer. But unfortunately, another missed placement again that communication not quite crystallizing as yet yeah Tonga is actually slowing down play they releasing on the third second which really is the short sharpness but more of the short and less of the sharp they are taking time to get that ball in really slowly so it's giving opportunity for the defenders to actually get around so we're getting enough turnover which is great another wonderful interception and turn by the South Africans, but Tonga will need to release a bit quicker if they want to make that impact. And we know what Kat can do with those first, second no-look passes, but we've not seen that from her yet. Oh, that's a good job there. Van der Berg gets her first goal in on a first attempt. Spa Proteas taking the lead, 10 goals to nine. That's better from Taliat. It's coming in with speed into that shooting circle. She does tend to stay out of the circle quite a lot. And as a goal attack, she needs to vary that entry into the shooting circle. Well, we've seen uh, Luana Aukafalao driving into the pockets. She loves the left-hand side. 
of the court. You can expect that. She will drive there to feed the shooters. Yeah, I'm glad you picked that up. See me, it was quite evident that Tonga loves playing on the left-hand side. They, I, I think it's maybe me because I'm sitting on the right-hand side. I'm just really playing on the far end. And um, they are slowing down, but we have to give credit to the South African defenders. They are really sticking man-to-man -man and applying a lot of pressure on the Tongan defence. Oh, did you see that from Tui okay, okay, Looking I'm one way, on. delivering it again into that left pocket. Oh, she's just so fascinating. She's such a pleasure to watch. There's always something spectacular that she's going to do. And ladies, how do you counter that? You know, both having been defensive players in your previous uh, life as a former nationals, because she, you, you can't follow her, you can't look at her because she's going to pass the ball in the exact opposite direction. So do you watch the ball or do you watch Tuvati? <laughs> well, I've never had the privilege of playing against this, so I think I'll leave it up to Vanessa to come up with a solution. I think she's had a couple of matchups against Tuivati. Yes, Zanele, I don't, I don't know if you remember, but back in 20, I think 2012, we played against them. She played for the Silver Fern, being Silver Fern 148. She had 24 caps for the New Zealand team, and we, I played against her. So here's the thing, when you're a defender, you've got so much to think about. You've got footwork, you've got... Just think about her reach. You have to think about where the ball's coming from, where's the space she's going to be receiving the ball, and you have to look at where her eyes are. Now, with Kat, you can't look at her eyes because her eyes are so deceiving. You'll have to work on her body language. She can be very elusive, very creative. She is also very good in contesting in the air, and she's got an extremely strong hold. Jante Strydom with a beautiful outside hand to not giving the last seconds to Tonga. But Katu Avati is just such a creative and exciting player with a lot of experience. Yeah, well said and well broken down. So this is a good work then for the Spark protest who equalise on the back of that steal. Just 10 seconds remaining. Enough time for one more goal. And can Tonga oh, take it all the way through? Look at that bullet pass. Great attempt from Oka Fulal. But uh, not meant to be as we reach the end of the first quarter. Oh, the idea was great. Just uh, the execution slightly overcooked. But uh, they'll be pleased with that start. 12 goals apiece at the end of the first 15 minutes of action. It's been an encouraging start from both the Spa Proteas as well as uh, Tonga. And I'm sure that uh, both coaches will be pleased of what is being displayed. But a uh, couple of uh, hasty decisions being made. We spoke about that miscommunication, misplacement. And um, that's what the coaches are going to be looking to better. Yeah, I was trying to, but I don't know why I thought it was all the other excuses. I saw Claire. just a little bit more hands right but you've got it covered which is great stay on the lead stay on the lead get back get hands confuse space the middle channel
at uh, for both teams at the end of the first quarter. Even Stevens and uh, what we saw in that first quarter pretty much reflected on the score. A couple of errors though that um, Sanel, I'm sure both coaches would have been looking at fine tuning and perfecting as we're about to enter the second quarter of this encounter. Yeah, most definitely. I think that was a bit of a jittery, unclean start for the Star Pro Spa Proteas. They'll need to really clean up in the second quarter. I'm sure Coach Nomo did have a word with them on that. We saw when they came off after that quarter, she was waiting for them there before they could go and sit down. And so the second quarter gets underway with the Spark Proteas a center pass. No changes from uh, the Spark Proteas. No surprises there whatsoever. It is the combination that closed off strong in that uh, first quarter. Contact, goal shooter. Yeah, no changes for the South African side, but what's interesting is I think the settling that you're speaking of needs to happen for the Proteas or Norma Plumner will be forced. We saw the whole bench warming up at the end of the first quarter. She will have to make a change if we don't, if South Africa doesn't start building on momentum in this match. It is Tonga, you know, really giving it all they've got. And um, at the moment, I'd love to know from the coach, Coach Jaqua, I mean, you're so familiar with the South Africans after being a South African team liaison for several weeks back in the day and now facing them coaching the Tongan side. Yeah, look, and um, I had the time of my life with the South African netball team and um, I'm proud to say that it's something that I've done. Yeah, we had a lovely time with you too, Coach, but today it's all about your shooters. Shooting at 100% at the moment, you must be so proud. Yeah, look, they've done an amazing job. Um, we've just got to make sure that we're still getting two options at that ball and, you know, not getting it too stagnant in attack. And our defenders are doing a great job as well. Yeah, I saw you praising the defence at, um, at the quarter break and you're saying they need to stay on the lead and close down that middle channel. What was your thoughts behind that? Oh, yeah, look, I think if we can just, you know, make South Africa work a little bit harder for that feed going into those shooters, then um, it's going to give us opportunity to turn some ball over. Oh, well, good luck, coach. Thanks. Great, thank you. Clear instructions then from the coach of Tonga. Oh, and that's exactly what she was talking to. Make the spa approaches work a little bit harder. The turnovers will come. And that's a brilliant turnover from Fayanga Anuku. Yeah, it is precisely what the head coach is asking for. But also concerning Zanele Chrysal was on one leg, which is also quite difficult, you know, to make an accurate pass because you're already under pressure from not being fully balanced. And also there's just... The connections are not there for me from the spa approaches. There's a bit of a disconnect. I'm not quite sure what it is, but they, they're not just being patient with ball in hand. They, you know, there's a high error error count as well and Tonga take the lead with two goals in the second quarter they've really gone back they've looked at how the small approach is playing they've come up with a plan here it's going to be important though for them to stick to their structures for the entire duration of this game Tonga if they are to cause what would be known as ultimately the biggest upset in this World Cup and what's also interesting for me, Zanella, is just the brilliance of uh, the defensive combination of Tonga. As uh, we see the Springbok captain, Sia Golisi, in the house. You know, I was walking, well, former, former Springbok captain, when I was walking to the venue, he was going the opposite direction. And I started hearing the crowd cheering, saying, Sia. Yeah. But I heard Sia and I thought they were cheering to me, Zanella. I was so excited for a second until I saw who it is that was coming my way. Only you can think that, Sammy <laughs> Duck, only you can think that. It's good to have Sia Colisi in the crowd. She, he is really loved here. He is really loved here and I mean, he's got little girls as well. I'm sure they also play netball. Yeah, so it's wonderful to see the current uh, Springbok captain. He also led us into song earlier on, which was a really fantastic and I think testament of the ambience here at the Cape Town International Convention Center. 
Ah, oh, there's Pretorius with the hand. Good deflection. Turns it then for the Spa Proteus. It was good work around the circle's edge from Carla Pretorius. Oh, that's much better. Feeds into the circle. And Van der Berg making it count as the Spa Proteus equalized 17 goals apiece. Just 10 minutes to the halfway mark. Oh, oh my goodness, Julita Veve right on the edge of the circle. But Crystal wasn't an option there. She was sandwiched between two defenders. Morgan was giving an option off the circle's edge. That's the one Taliat should have used. And the tempo control then from Tonga. She's looking for something extraordinary to Ivati. Oh, I got excited there seeing a dodge from Veve. I haven't seen too many of those. And it was almost done in slow motion. And it worked. Oh, call for contact to Ivati. Mawena doing well to draw that contact. Can they take this ball through the, the Spa Proteus? Oh, the South African defenders just doing the most on attack. So beautiful. No look, backhand pass by Jante Stradom as if she was cut to Ivati. And uh, it was much better momentum. We spoke about the beginning of this quarter. We spoke about that momentum building and it is taking place on court, even though the scoreboard isn't reflecting what's happening. South Africans do have more possession. They do have more opportunity. It's just about closing up and making every goal count. And there the crowd starting to chant defense. So there's their penalty shot from uh, Marie. Hansen. So just eight and a half minutes then to the halfway mark. Beautiful. Into Van der Berg. I'll tell you what's changed in the shooting circle with the introduction of Van der Berg. Dalia is actually creating the space there, giving the opportunity for Van der Berg. And when it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, or in that instance where she's left alone, it makes it so much easier for the attackers to find her. So I'm enjoying this partnership. And I definitely think that it's working much better, even looking at the conversion rate so far. Oh, not with Kumza Maweni there. It was never going to work, but it was a brilliant switch between Pretorius and Maweni. They have such a good understanding of the two. This partnership has been coming a long way now for the Spa approaches. Oh, they almost so getting a hand to that one. Oh, you see, the thing is, she's under pressure there, Van der Berg. She's pressed against the, the back line. Oh, Talia Chiki. <laughs> She'll also bring the spice and uh, the flavor in that shooting circle. We shall look at that from Maweni. Solid take. For me, it's the decision making, Zanella. You know, you mentioned it earlier on when you've got two on one, two defenders on one player. They're not an option. Look for the person who's roaming around unmarked. But in that instance, it does work. The spot Proteas up by three goals. So this is really encouraging stuff. And what the spot Proteas defensively are doing now, they, you know, they preventing Tonga from using the front players for that center pass. So they're forcing the, the center pass to go to the back players. So it's good defensive work they're putting up there. I, I have to agree with you, Zanele, not only with the centre pass, but the through court defence. They're also shutting down that first option and they're making Tonga play the second or third option. So they are slowing down Tonga quite excessively. But then it's the timing on the attack for Tonga that's kind of getting them through. The absolute experience. And we see some of the Tongans, I don't know what it means, I'll hope to find out, but a lot of the Tongans have their hands raised and their fists raised in the arm. The arm completely extended with a fist in the air. So I think it's like a sign of unity. It, that's what I gather, because every time they lose a ball, there's an arm going up. Don't know if you've picked that up. Well, Vanessa, that's why we've got you there courtside. So 
we can release you <laughs> to go and find out exactly what it it means because i'm sure it is quite um, a sentiment mental gesture from uh, the tonga side but uh, looking back then on where things stand two goals lead for the spot proteas the attacking play has definitely improved as in the second quarter seems a uh, you know a lot more controlled well thought out and the finish can't say enough about that 100% smoother, direct, precise from the spa approaches on the attack. And also, they've upped the tempo defensively. Oh, Pretorius! Oh, but she had to be on court to be able to keep that ball in play. But it is the good work that's been done by the entire team. That's putting, they're putting up that pressure. And that's why players like Mawin and Pretorius can get a hand to a ball. Oh, fortunate uh, misplacement there from Stradham to Msomi. It gives uh, Tonga an opportunity to get back on the attack. But look at that from Dalyard. Three feet defense, bullet pass. I'll tell you one thing, Simi. That's one thing that sets her apart from most goal attacks. Dalyard, strong defensively. And that's an area she's worked on. She's added that to her game. You don't expect a girl attack to have a three-foot defense, you know, strategy, but she, the way she does it, she's able to really contribute effectively from a defensive perspective for her side. Oh, we see a substitution. Taofu, Taofa coming on on wing attack. And uh, replaying Okafalao. Akafalao really had a good first quarter, 16 feet being, being replaced by Salute Taufa. So that's going to be interesting then to see what it is that uh, Salote Taufa brings to the table in the wing attack position. I really thought that uh, Akafalao was doing a great job, but the coach uh, knows they play his best. Uh, I see Monia Gerard actually warming up on goalkeeper at the moment. Beside me, she's with a heavily strapped left knee, but Monia Gerard warming up, standing up, signaling. So we might expect a change for Tonga very soon. Oh man, and what an injection she will be for this Tonga side defensively. The experience that she brings. Monia has played for the Diamonds. Coached by Coach Norma Plummer, under Norma Plummer. Uh, we'll never forget 2011, them winning that World Cup in Singapore, and there comes the legend. She took time off netball, went to rugby. Now she's come back and she's wearing the Tongan colours. Let's see what that experience that she has then, how it fares against the youth of an Elmarie van der Berg. Yeah, just to confirm, it is Monia Gerard. She was Australian diamond number 134 and played 86 times for the Australian side. Yeah, she definitely will add to the defensive effort of Tonga. She previously played wing defence, but uh, from this World Cup, I really think that she's been a solid keeper. And uh, no wonder... Jack Porimakia Simpson has oh, brought her in that time. position. Oh, and Veve never seems to disappoint. The go-to girl that midcourt, the captain of this Tongan side. Brilliant steal. Yeah, so I found out from the Tongan management that when they raise their arms in full extent with the fist at the end, it means it's a positive sign to say, keep it up, keep going. So it is a positive motivation for the Tongans, just keeping that united flow of keeping it going. Vanessa, I see you hijacking that and utilizing it. <laughs> and we can see you cross court, but we did say that, you know, just how spiritual the Tongan side is. And I think uh, exactly that's what uh, we expected from them, that there would be a deep meaning you know, to that uh, arm raise. And a positive one too, you know. 
So there's a lot of noise, obviously, in the arena, and it's all majority Spa Protea supporters, but just need to take one of the Tongan players on court to just glance at the crowd and see that raised um, arm, and then that can be a bit of motivation and encouragement for them. So we're just into the final minute, heading to the second, to the end of the second half. And uh, Spa Protea starting to pull away <laughs> from Tonga as they currently enjoy a six-goal lead. And an improvement as well from a shooting perspective for the Spa Protea is 14 out of 14, Van der Berg, and 10 out of 13 for Taliyad sitting at 77% much better from compared to what they were putting up in that first quarter oh good defensive work from the spa approaches oh the clock's ticking away and unfortunately not enough time oh the penalty was given but Missed opportunity then from uh, Murray Hansen. She had a chance to get one more goal, but we do close off the second quarter with the spot protests leading by seven. They were equal at the end of the first quarter and uh, took charge in the second. So that's where things stand at the halfway mark. 30 goals for the spot protests versus 23 of Tonga. I think it's absolutely empowering that women can do nothing against the men, but um, exactly what men can do. It shouldn't be a gender thing anymore. It should be a uh, you're able to and you've got the skill set to do so. Showing people out there that, hey, maybe you can become a camera woman. But it didn't get there. Otherwise, I must get the Jamaican friend for the final. Jamaica's going to play final, so... Yeah, bring... Wie is dit? Her name is Hyacin. She is a Jamaican. Coming to you live from the CTICC. This is why every single time that we are here, you'll be able to hear people around us. We're bringing all of the action to you right here on SABC2. And of course, right now, it is South Africa taking on Tonga for the fifth and sixth playoff position. And we are hoping, we are praying that we can take it because, Joe, we did not expect what we are seeing here today. I mean, you two ladies actually said it would be a 20 margin and a 22. Mm -hmm. Now we're sitting only, I think, a gap of around seven or eight. Seven. Yes, but I'm still sticking to the 2022 because I did say we can't um, expect an easy game, mm -hmm. especially in the beginning because we did mention the experience and the skill level of the Tonga girls and they did showcase that in the first half. 
But like you can see now, in the first quarter, it was equal. Yeah. Second quarter, pulling away with seven goals. And I think that's going to be extended in the second half. And we did say Naples a game of two halves. And I think the Proteas just have a bit more stamina and can run a bit longer than the Tonga goal. So I mm. think this team is going to run out. But we did see that skill. We did see that wisdom. Yeah. But I still am sticking to the 20 plus margin. Oh, we're going to be finding out soon enough. Of course, it is the first time that South Africa and Tonga are meeting ever. So we're each learning each other. And I think we saw that very strongly Alsha because in the beginning South Africa kind of was finding their feet I mean there were even points where Tonga was actually beating us yeah definitely they were leading um, in the first quarter quite a few times mm. Tonga quite physical out there <laughs> our girls look a bit flat I was very surprised with the change of Almeray uh, taking off Ina Marie because I thought Ina did really well and I, I mean... thought yeah, I actually thought Nicole was a bit hanging in the corners and they were cutting her off quite easily. Mm. And I was actually expecting the change to come on Almeray on a goal attack, also for some fresh legs. Oh. Uh, but, you've, but at the back again, you know, our defence has just been doing some super work. You'll see how tight we are on the inside, push, uh, pushing them wide on the outside. Yeah. Um, and then forcing those long balls in and that, that always brings uh, Pumza back into the game. Yes. Uh, a rare miss there from Nicole, but luckily a rebound. You know, she's quite good on a rebound. She is. Um, and that's important for any shooter, you know. So for the young shooters that are watching this, it's never over, you know. You can keep on contesting. So, um, yeah, I really, I really thought Ina did well in holding. The defense really struggled to get around her. Um, she was positioning quite well. At the yeah. moment, I feel Alma Ray is giving away her space too quickly turning too soon and then I just can't find her. Yeah, one thing about uh, Almeray though I will say is her accuracy. So just like we saw now where Inna missed one of her shots, uh, she's been doing very well in terms of that. However, we do know that the ladies did find their rhythm as they were going along. Joe Prince, speak to us about what we did right in quarter two, particularly to get that margin of seven right after Q1 where we were practically on par. Yeah, we always mention the defense. Um, we get enough opportunities. Our defense, do, they do turn the ball, but then we struggle to convert because mm. um, we're still trying to find that link there going to our shooters, and they did miss a couple of shots. Yeah. But like you said, they settled in now, and we're still getting those turnovers. So it's just about the unity and getting that link from defense to attack a bit better and settling in. Um, yeah. But I do like having Bongi there in the attack um, with Izet in combination with Nicole because Bongi is nice and quick, and Nicole likes playing outside of the circle as well in a bit of a more attacking position. Yes. So having Izet a taller, a bit more slower, kind of not really driving so hard, but using the pockets and coming a bit in delayed, it creates more space for Bongi and Nicole to have that interplay. Mm. Yes, coach did mention about Almere moving a bit too soon, giving away her space and turning her shoulder a bit quickly. Yes. So I would like her to anchor a bit stronger because we have Nicole that can then play her open and create that space and pull the defenders to get that over. And like you said, Almere is accurate. So if she anchors a bit better, she can just focus on a shot and we can extend that lead even more. Come on. And of course, what did you call Pumza earlier on, coach? You said that she is what? A superstar. Exactly. Yeah, no, she's a superhero. Yes. I think she's like our player of the tournament at the moment for the Proteus. Because a lot has gone wrong for us. And honestly, she has been there just to pick things up. Speak to us about Pumza's game, particularly in this game. Oh, you know, she's such a warrior, you know. And, mm. um, you know, that's what you need to be as a defender. You need to be brave. Yeah. You need to be able to absorb a lot of calls that might go against you. And you have to be in the game, reading that that game. And when the bad passes happen, you need to be able to capitalize on that. Yeah. But what I really liked about her is how she alternating her position from behind to in front. Yes. And also playing the 50-50, sometimes on the body, sometimes off the body, dancing around, confusing the space, do a bit of edging. Sometimes, you know, if she's in trouble, she just go and jump that, that feeder in front. Yeah. So I must tell you, she's been bringing it all to that circle defense. And that's what you want. And it's actually showing in the result that she's bringing to us. She's rock solid for us at the back. And every time we're in trouble, it just seems like she just pulls something out of that to yes. turn it around. And she started to come back. We were, we were behind by two. Great intercept. Um, you know, she just get, went on the hand outside of the circle, turned that ball game and then we started to pull away ah and playing like a superstar is exactly what Pumza is doing but our ladies as well leading by seven at the half between Tonga and South Africa do not go anywhere because the action continues right here on SABC2 all in the name of the 2023 Nepal World Cup
Spot Poachers doing well in that uh, second quarter to turn things around. Can they pick up and build on that momentum? Well, that uh, serves to be seen in the third quarter that gets underway. Already spotting a change then for Tonga. Palavi comes in on that goal attack position. No place then for Hansen. And Gerard takes the goal defense position. That's second quarter. She was on goalkeeper. Iongi moves to goalkeeper then. Oh, overcooked it to Veve, but they have another chance. Tonga. Yeah, I thought the spot protest did well there, cornering. The Tonga players just giving them no access. Jesting towards the right corner of that circle. That's why Unique yeah. Palavi has taken to court. She's one of the rock stars in that Tongan side. Yeah, Coach Norma Plummer looking for more consistency, especially on that attacking side with a slow start, or a tough start, I would say. How would you say it? Definitely. Uh, in fact, it wasn't a good start for us at all. We seemed like to forget where were the players in red. And not in red, we were in white and we were passing to red. So they needed to um, just get their self settled and start actually working a ball short and sharp. And uh, in that second quarter, we changed up a few more things and it was good. But yeah, there's a lot of rock stars out there actually. Any Anyone in particular, coach? Yeah, Latu. <laughs> yeah, Tuavati and obviously Monia Gerard, you coached back in the day. Ah, oh, yes. Brilliant player. Love it to death. But not today. <laughs> not today. It's all about the South Africans. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, there's a turnover for you, coach. Thank you so much for telling well, us. Well, we've been working on it. I hope they can maintain it now. Yeah, we need more of those, coach. Yes, we do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, she, yeah, she, she's just a breath of fresh air, coach Norma Plummer. Calls it exactly the way it is. Says loves. Monia Gerard coached it. But today, she's all about the spa Proteas and the defensive work paying off then for the Proteas. She's looking for that consistency still. It's good to see them raising the standard with every quarter. Yeah, I just took a glimpse over while you're talking about normal plans. And Ellen, she's having a talking to with Wong and Solmi. I'm not sure what she's asking to cut out or where to drive, but I love the fact that, you know, she's She's intimately involved and engaged in the game and also able to relay the messages. But what's even more refreshing, the players very receptive to those instructions. Oh, beautiful. Taliat to Van der Berg. It's good chemistry between these two players. Just a bit of confusion here. Not sure what the umpire is saying. Yeah, she'll win that one-on-one -on -one battle then. Van der Berg in the shooting circle. And the crowd happy elated here out to support the Spa Proteas. Ten goal leads for South Africa. Oh, beautiful collection from Palavi, but a missed attempt, very unusual. She does get saved by two Vaiti. Oh, that was much better attack from the Tongan side. They really kept it all wide, drove through the middle. The timing was much better. And uh, it's just about finishing off on that first attempt. The ball distribution on the attacking side is, is really good for Tonga. But if I'm looking to my right, I see Pumza Maweni a little bit uncomfortable. She's walking off. She's jumping out. Um, a bit of a niggle. Not a niggle. It's just an uncomfortability on her side. But um, it seems that she is recovering quite well. from Grissel. And once the spa approaches, let that ball go, you know, quickly and they drive with pace. It's really smooth down court on the attack. So 
So Tonga needs to guard against this uh, setup that uh, they're implementing at the moment. A double block on Funneberg. So both uh, Gerard and Iongi covering her, but they're forgetting about Daliart, who can take on that responsibly, responsibility quite easily as well. So they need to stop her from getting into the shooting circle. South Africa. <laughs> oh, there's the rock star. <laughs> Catherine Lati to Ivati. The no look passes. Nobody does them better than she does. And it's like you feel I feel like if you're in a team with with a two Ivati, you've got to expect the ball at any given at any given moment. See the change then again in that goalkeeper position for Tonga. Yep, we see Lucy Fanga Anuku coming on goalkeeper and uh, it isn't her first time on court so she'll be making her comeback in the previous occasions she had five penalties so let's five see how it goes this time around A oh, great give and go, Chrysal to Daliard. Playing it safe, keeping it short. Focus defensively, still in front of both. But they've got to look out for Daliard. She's dangerous, she's lethal. The minute she gets into the shooting circle, that's where the problems begin for Tonga. There's the defense from the spot purchase. The hands over. Contact on attack. I love them. I love it when they apply that pressure in that midcourt. Just keeping Tonga to play a lot of recycle ball, reset ball. Oh my goodness, the idea was good from Bebe. But Pulavi was pressed against that line. There was no space there. I think she could have used the fake just to draw Maweni out and then be able to deliver a clean ball to her shooter. And to add to that, Zanella, I feel like Pumza was ball side, so it wasn't really the best of options. And they need to look out for that because Maweni is switched on. Oh, that was brilliant from Alma Reifenberg, but just getting back to Veve, I mean, a vision, and she's had such a good World Cup. She also plays in Queens with Queensland. Um, for the Ipswich Jets, so she's already in a quite a good league there in Australia. So she's got a lot of experience under her belt, and she's really reading the play well with a great eye and vision for those feeds into the circle. Yeah, so this is a good defensive work from Gerard, denying Van der Berg any movement. Just a um, few tricks from her and uh, they definitely have boded well so hopefully they'll be able to take the ball down safely to the shooting circle both Tuvati and Palavi sandwiched between Pretorius and Maweni but completely unfazed is unique Palavi that makes it count I think uh, Monia is still inspired by her rugby days with those passes that underhand pass but um, can be quite That's dangerous. Just stay out, Just yeah, the, the umpire just indicating to both Pretorius and Maweni just to keep upright and not drop in their upper body as they are giving away a little bit more penalties than what they would like. So good talking to from the umpire to our defensive side. Solid performance here from Elmer Ray van der Berg. 24 out of 25, 96% for this youngster. Future extremely bright. Oh, look at that chase from Maweni. And the support from Jante Stradom.
Oh, look at Tuvaiti. Completely stoked with that call against Pretorius. She's quite an animated, you know, player. Wears a heart in her sleeve. Was very expressive. She's having a good day. You'll know it. If she's not pleased with something, she won't hold back. A much, much better shooting stats from South Africa. Almeray van der Berg on 96, Nicole Taliart on 80. In that first quarter, we won 50%. So really a much better shooting performance by the Spa Proteas. Defensively from Stratum, putting pressure and picking that ball up. Oh, uh, Simi, how many proteas does it take to pick up a ball? <laughs> Listen, it's a team effort. And that's what's going to win this game of netball. And we see the shooters also rewarding the defensive effort. As we see the return of Mary Hansen on goal attack, Palavi then sits this one out. Yeah, they're looking for solutions in that shooting circle, Tonga. You've got to credit the defensive work by Stradom, Petrovius and Maweni. Just not accessing that circle easily, Tonga. I think they're just missing that additional fetcher, collector of the ball, and that's what uh, Hansen brought to the party. She did uh, score 9 out of 10, so 90% success rate. Oh, Pretorius, she reads those bounce passes so well, and her reaction time for me, her response is just, her takeoff is so good. Look at that. Long arms. Just where you are. Yeah, we even saw a little bit of a kick. She was probably inspired by Banyana Banyana, who's also doing really, really well at the FIFA Women's Soccer World Cup, but... South Africa, for me, at the moment, sitting on 82% when it comes to unforced turnover to goal rate, which that means is every time Tonga makes a mistake, South Africa punishes them. So every time there's a turnover, South Africa has an 82%. That's probably the highest it's been at this World Cup. So really good in capitalizing on Tongan mistakes. Conversion then from Tuivati. So just uh, three minutes then remaining in this champion. Shapkota with the spot protest up by 12 goals. We can see a renewed sense of energy and pace in the attacking side of things for Tonga. Probably brought on by Murray Hansen on the goal attack. And the stronghold of Van der Berg in that circle. She goes straight up, takes that ball so aggressively with two hands. Ah, oh, Crystal gets a hand to it. It's still possession for Tonga. Throw in, Tonga. Exceptional shooting stats there from. Kath to Ivati sitting at 100%, 17 out of 17 and 91 for Hansen. Yeah, with regards to that shooting stats, we see that Tonga has yet to take a goal or a shot at goal on the left hand side of the court. It's quite evident that they are favoring the right hand side. They have not yet shot a goal from the left hand side in the goal shooting circle. Yeah, and that's great intel, something uh, coaches uh, could pick up as well, you know, to force them to the left-hand side. So those are some of the tactics that can be applied by the coaches to put the opposition 
under pressure. They are still under pressure. They're trailing by 12 goals at the moment. Just over a minute remaining in the third quarter. Oh, look at that double block on two Vitae. You cannot afford to leave Hansen unmarked. South Africa. Well, they were setting it up so well. It was a win-win situation either way. Whoever got that ball would have been able to, to shoot. That's why Tui Vaiti had that smile on the face. To say, oh, we're going to win this one either way. Oh, the quick offload to Van der Berg. Looking at the last 10 goals there. Five apiece. Oh, you seldom see Van der Berg smiling. I love that smile. Listen, She's happy because uh, things are really going her way in that shooting circle at the moment. I've never seen her smile. So this is really, really encouraging. It means that she's having fun in court. Her performance is reflecting that as well from the minute that she stepped in. Yeah, a bit of a pressured pass there. What's the goal shooter? But uh, two Vitae gets the benefit right under the goalpost. And that makes it 18 out of 18 for Kat Tuvaiti. And uh, we do reach the end of the third quarter. It's a consistent performance from the spot protest who close off with an 11 goal lead. So looking at the quarter by quarter breakdown, Tonga challenging and contesting in the first quarter. But uh, the Spa Protes uh, putting their foot on the accelerator and dominating from the second and the third quarters. So only one more quarter remains in this encounter between Tonga and South Africa with the Spa Proteas leading by 11 goals as we get into the fourth and final quarter. Yeah, a better performance though from Tonga in that third quarter. 
just trading by four goals in that third and championship quarter. And Coach Norma Plummer, happy with the distribution of the ball to Van der Berg. She was asking the players that they must take it from the transverse line. They must get into the goal third and maybe offload it a little bit closer to the circle's edge. I think it's important, you know, not to deviate too much from the game plan. And the fourth quarter gets underway. Sure that uh, normal plan will be looking to close off strong. Just one player that, uh, you know, well, one coach rather that takes it match by match, but I'm sure Zanella, she's already thinking ahead as well on uh, what's coming on Sunday. Should they retain this lead and walk away victorious today? And I can tell you, Simi, she wants them to finish strong. She wants them to really put out a clinical 15 minutes final quarter because yesterday against Uganda, that's when Uganda came back into the game in that second half. So it's important for the Spa Proteus. They do have the lead, but closing off well becomes key. This is good preparation as to how they're going to perform when they're up against Uganda. And you know, I, I always, I, I'm a firm believer that when you do have that gap and you have that lead, it's easy to become complacent and sort of let things become messy. But oh, someone is not letting things become messy. It's Pretorius. Brilliant intercept from Carla. Yeah, Carla Pretorius has hands like Spider-Man. The ball just doesn't want to go any pl place okay. else, but just stick to her hand. Just She's got here amazing the power. Purchase, but they need to get into that goal third. Bad instruction center. Bad instruction center. Yeah, so I was quite um, uh, quite sneaky there, Simi and Zanelli. Yeah. I opened up the, co the, the referee mic at halftime and I heard them indicating that some players of the Tongan sign are a little bit late on the body and I overheard them say that it's something that they're looking out for. So maybe on the other hand, we had the coaches talking about getting off the body. So it's quite a nice symbiotic understanding of what to do on the netball court for the Tongans. And there was a slight persistent contact mention for the goal defense. Now we've got to find out who that goal defense is because I wasn't sure if it was South Africa or Tonga, but I'm sure it, we might find out soon. Oh, that's great insight, Vanessa. You know, just uh, getting a sense of uh, the umpires as well and their take on the physicality of this encounter. We've always known that, you know, the game here is always going to be tightly contested, but of course they want to control the game and manage it better. Oh, called again for the contact. Hansen. Just using her body there to try and get away from Carla Pretorius. Again, Dalyard doing the work, bringing it ball through. And you know what I love about her? That's been so impressive. She knows when to take the shot. She knows when she put to play to Elnare van der Berg. And as a defender, that must be your worst nightmare because you never know what's coming. Oh. And also she's got range as well. She can shoot from anywhere in that shooting circle. Oh, that was beautiful. I got literal goosebumps. I thought you were going to say chicken skin. I was going to say chicken skin. Yeah, well, I, thought I you know, know you what? too well, Vanessa. I, I thought, you know what, let's keep it professional. But I, I really had goosebumps for that move. It was beautiful mid-drive from Almeray van der Berg. And the shooter to shooter pass from Almeray to Taliart. Really grew a much better flow on attack from the South Africans at the moment. Oh, there's the president of Netball South Africa, Cecilia Malogwane. She must be pleased with what her side is bringing to the court this evening. And another smile from Elmeray van der Berg. Nothing warms my heart up more than seeing the players at their best and enjoying themselves. And not only them, the spectators are up on their feet as well. I mean, this is really some world-class stuff. Oh, 
That was exceptional from Somi turning that ball. Quickly down court then they go, Spa Proteus. That's the connection you were talking about. Simigiwe between Taliat and Almore and how Taliat knows exactly when to offload that ball to her, when to take responsibility by converting. Look at the variety she's bringing there, Almore. Oh, too smooth for this young, dynamic goal shooter of the Spa Proteus. Oh, we're seeing more subs coming in. It, it's a double whammy for the Pallavis. It's unique and Beyonce Pallavi coming on on the attacking side for Tonga. So it's a Palawi Poloni sandwich. Yeah, and we can expect um, lots of uh, fireworks with the two Pallavi shooters. It's a much more mobile shooting circle that uh, coach uh, Jack Pori Makia Simpson has gone for. She needs the troops to get into the swing of things. Haven't managed to since uh, that first quarter. And there we hear the Guijo. Brilliant take there from Izzet Crystal. The Guijo that's just, you know, encouraging the spa approaches, injecting some energy into them. You must know that this crowd will sing until the spa, spa approaches cross that finish line first. So good to be at home, having this home crowd support. Yeah, we always talk about the eighth player being the goalpost, but South Africa has a ninth player in the crowd, Zanella, and they have just been phenomenal. So we seeing uh, Fenter also warming up behind the bench and a few other players. All way to Kubane alongside her. So that could single, signal that Noma Plum is probably going to bring her back in just to reinforce, you know, that discipline, build that confidence, as well as uh, Shasha van der Merwe. Yeah, it seems like she's going to make wholesale changes, Coach Noma Plummer. Everybody is warming up. Chawane, Nicholas Smith, Shadeen van der Merwe, Gubane, she's standing with, going to take Bibb, saw me contesting. Oh, rather called for contact there, though. Yeah, I see on the side, the whole bench is warming up, as you alluded to. But I want to know, Zanele, where and who would you take off and put on? Yeah, well, listen, with seven and a half minutes left, we... Spa Proteas are ahead by 20 goals. You can make wholesale changes and just give everybody that's been on the bench an opportunity to play in this game. Uh, they might not have that luxury come Sunday when they're up against Uganda, the She Cranes. It's good to see Gubana with that goal attack position. Rather, goal attack bit. Would love to see her get an opportunity here in this game just to build some confidence and give her that experience. She's obviously the player that has been brought in to replace Lenise Sportfitter. Yeah, we can see all four, well, not including uh, Kanyisa, she is sitting on the bench, but there's the players that are standing behind the bench. Fenter, Gubane, Van der Merwe, Smith. So that could indicate that Plum's going to make wholesale changes, and why not? They're up by 22 goals. Well, the uh, 21 with uh, Tonga just scoring that additional point. So it really is a good time to make those substitutions. Uh, someone who's really been having a wonderful game is Izet Grisel. She's just such a powerhouse and she's so strong on the attack. She collects balls, she distributes and she's got a lot of speed and not to mention her height. She's standing tall in 1.83. 1 meters tall which is very tall for a wing attack but she's got the speed to back it up 
bad obstruction goal defence. Just keeps sinking the balls, Almaray Vanderberg. She hasn't put a foot wrong in this game, sitting on 96%. Really a phenomenal performance from this young, dynamic player. I keep saying young because she really is young. She's really just stepped on court in the green and gold and she's grabbed the opportunity to represent the country with both hands. Yeah, she has been a revelation, hasn't she? And there goes the whistle then. We expected wholesale changes from the spa protest. All five players on the bench taking to court. Ngubane, Van der Merve, Chawane, Smith. Well, with the exception of Fenter, who is uh, still setting this one out. But I mean, how wonderful is that, Zanella? Because they're closing off strong, they're giving the rest of the team an opportunity as well. Because Sunday's fifth and sixth positional playoff will be top of mind. Top of mind indeed. And tomorrow they get to rest the spa protest. And obviously, we'll go through and work through their, their plan on how to make sure they end up fifth in this World Cup. That's the objective. It is the World Netball President, Liz Nickel, being treated to some of the best netball that uh, she's seen. Oh, Simi almost interrupted you there. Did you see the beautiful interception from Kanisha Chawane? Kanisha, Casey has just been such a rebel, but not seen too much of her in this Netball World Cup. And uh, I need to tell you, as the pro tiers came down, when we saw that complete overall of the spa pro tiers, when all the changes happened, the smiles of the players coming off court, winking, high-fiving, and it's just such a wholesome experience for this pro tier side to be able to give everybody a run on court. Yeah, it really is, um, I think, uh, quite a good position to be in. Tomorrow they do have a rest day, and I'm sure they will really want to stay off their feet. So there's the skipper, Bo Somi who has really been a phenomenal leader for the Spark Proteus side. But just over three minutes remaining then. In this encounter, 23 goal lead for South Africa. Didn't look like that in the first quarter, but uh, they turned things up and uh, maintained consistent results and performance with each quarter as it progressed and we were speaking earlier on about how important it is for them to end this one on a high and close off strong certainly doing that 21 8 in this quarter for the spa proteus well oiled performance deserves the smiles from Kubane. oh the confidence is oozing on the attacking side for the Proteas, they are doing the most. They're playing out of their skin at the moment and seeing so many creative passes, long shot, long bombs. And they are really enjoying it. A lot of smile, smiles coming from the attacking side. And the Proteas are flying. And uh, I mean, when we, I know we're talking extensively about the Spark Proteas ladies, but you've got to also, you know, give credit to Tonga for the fight that they put up as uh, Pretoria gets another great take. She has been sensational today. But you've got to give credit to Tonga. They started off well, and the thing's not really you know, coming to fruition, but uh, they never gave up. They tried different things, and the uh, coach not hesitating you know, to introduce the substitutions and see who can give her what she was looking for. So they may have lost the match, but I'm sure that uh, There'll be lots of positives that they draw from this encounter. Francis breaking goal attack. Oh, seamless from the Proteas on the attack. Bench is happy with that passage of play as well. So is the crowd. 
Yes, Simi, I must, I must echo your sentiments that Tonga really hit the ground running that first quarter. It was a 12-12 affair. They sort of let it slip as the game progressed. I mean, in this quarter now, they're sitting on only eight goals to the 25 of the Spa Proteas. But what they can take, the positives from this one would be, you know, they can give the Spa, they can stay with the Spa Proteas, but they just need to be a little bit more consistent. And look at that turnover from Owe Tungubane. It's really encouraging to see attacking players with the Spa Proteas contributing defensively. It's a good intercept from Owe to. Oh, we love an attacker that can take some interceptions, but today the Proteas arrived with a lot of technical and clinical netball that they wanted to play and perform. It was a slow start for them, but they finished strong. They are really going with a lot of confidence into that fifth and sixth playoff. Having a race day tomorrow, we'll see them the day after. But the ball distribution and retention, the consistency and the possession that we retained as the South Africans absolutely flew on the attacking side as well as the defensive side. Oh, they certainly have been soaring in this encounter as they secure a victory and secure their spot in the fifth and sixth positional playoff. I'm sure they'll want, to, they're aiming for that uh, fifth placement. Coming into this World Cup as the fifth ranked team according to World Netball Rankings. So job well done then by the Spa Proteas. And what a privilege it was to see all 12 players taking to court and uh, just uh, delivering what was expected by the head coach, Norma Plummer. And for Tonga, they put up a good fight, certainly in the first quarter, but it wasn't enough to give them the result. They will take away the small victories from their performance holistically. So that's the score at the end of the, ma of the match. It is a victory for South Africa, 72 versus a 46 of Tonga. And as always, the uh, Spark Proteas getting into a huddle just to show their appreciation and gratitude for being able to play the sport and carry the flag. And really, there's so much to be grateful for. As we're seeing the same from Tonga. Really, the one team that uh, came into this World Cup, not a lot of noise, not a lot of talk around what we expected. And all they did was to play the best netball they could. You lead uh, quite a tough one playing South Africa in their home ground. What was the experience like? Oh, it was an amazing experience. We didn't come away with the win or the game that we would have liked to play, but the crowd here is huge and playing the home team is always going to be special and credit to South Africa. They really brought, us, brought it to us today. But I thought you guys had an incredible campaign. Just talk us through how amazing it is to uh, be up a little bit in terms of your ranking. Yeah, I think we're just grateful to be here. Um, we wanted to qualify for the World Cup and now we're ranked seventh and we're just going to keep pushing forward to that and we're just grateful for the opportunity. Congratulations on a great campaign. Awesome, thank you. Captain, fantastic. I'm so me. I mean, the girls really stepping up when it, it's needed the most. What are you looking forward to come the next uh, game against uh, uh, Uganda? Oh, I think it will be great if we could actually start well and be able to finish strong. We've been um, guilty of starting really well at times, but then third quarter we did look a bit shaky. So today, I have to say, the girls really stepped up. And it was really just because we wanted to come here and prove that we can actually again be better. So far, I'm really proud of the girls. And listen, how's the experience been with the camp in terms of the mood of not making it into the semi-finals? Oh, look, when we came here, we actually knew that we want to give it a crack and go to semi-final. We're sitting here, not going, not going to a semi-final, but we only lost to, I guess, Jamaica. We drew to New Zealand and we have all the other wins. So I think with that, we can actually be proud of what we've done so far. It would be great if we could play a semi, but this was our semi-final. So we're going to a final on Sunday. All the best for that final and great leadership that you've done with the team. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you. Play of the match, Vandenberg.
Oh, fantastic. You've only missed two shots at goal, 96%. I mean, talk about coming in at the right time. How are you feeling about this one? Uh, it was a really nice, nice match and we played so good as a team. And yeah, we just played with, played with patience and converted the goals. Listen, you seem to flourish under Norma Plama. What's the experience been like making it into her team and playing under her? Uh, she's so patient and wants to um, teach you new things the whole time. And yeah, it's a privilege and honor to be able to play under her and get all that um, experience she has to project on the players. And say something to the fans. I mean, they've been here throughout for you. Any kind of shout out to them? Oh, we love our country so much. And the uh, spirit here yeah, is just something else. Um, yeah, we love every one of them who's here. And yeah, thank you for the support. Mooi gespeer en geluk. Bye, Ranky. <laughs> Oh, great stuff there from Elmere van der Berke. She was sensational, contributing 50 of the 72 goals from the Spa Proteas at a 94% success rate. And Zanella, the match did turn with the introduction of van der Berke. 100%. And that's the beauty of having such a, a fearless goal shooter. You know, there were struggles in that first quarter in the shooting circle for the Spa Proteas. The moment she came on, she became the difference. She was the difference. Really deserving to get that Player of the Match award. And if you missed out on all the action, that's it. you make of these stats come at the end of the game? Rather? Yeah, I really like how our penalty count is coming down. It just shows that our discipline is getting better, Yes. Uh, which is fantastic. Shooting accuracy, we'd like to see that over the 90s, but that's just maybe because we spoiled. And as I said, you know, throughout this tournament, overall, the shooters has been really, really of high standard. Yes. And then time, uh, time with ball in, um, in hand, you know, 53%, it shows in the score. You know, we've been quite dominant, especially mm -hmm. after half time. So the stats are supporting the scoreline. 100%. Uh, of course, we have got our goal shooter, our extraordinaire. It is Lenise Botgieter. Lenise, what do you think of this? Are you proud of the team for what they've done? Yes, listen, she, uh, she had me on my, the edge of my seat in that first half yes. of the game. Listen, <laughs> um, I've, that's when my voice is, I'm sounding like a man because I've been yelling. Yes. Um, but you know what? I think the stats are so much better than last night's game. Yeah. yeah. Penalties went down. The turnovers, we have less turnovers From than the other team. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Our stats, except for the shooting accuracy, but it's like doc, uh, Dr. Ausher. Well, it's Dr. Ausher. It Ausher. is Dr. Ausher, yes. yes. <laughs> said um, it's because we spoiled. So yeah. I think kudos to our team for rocking up for the second half of yeah. the game, yeah. other than like last night. So now we just have to bring that both first half and second half. Yeah. Put it together on Sunday. Yeah. With you saying that, please can I ask you, Denise, what do you think it is that we did wrong in that first half? Because we even saw in quarter one where Tonga was beating us and honestly and truly, I was scared. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I think it's about the unfamiliar as well. Mm. We've never ever played against Tonga before. Um, we don't know their style of play. We don't know the players. Mm. So it's about finding our feet first, um, connecting with each other on court in the first quarter and also just eliminating unnecessary balls. Yes. Um, there were times that we could have like decreased, let's say, 10 passes to five passes, yeah. and that would have already helped put mm -hmm. us in front, where if we play too many balls, then there's opportunity for their defenders to start intercepting, deflecting. So, which they did every now and again. Which they did, mm. and especially the strong players. They phys like physically built strong, and they're fast, yeah. and they're clever. And, Magician, she's called Cat yeah. Latte Magician, but I think all of them because yeah. they've been under leadership from her. So <laughs> I think that's what happened in the first quarter, mm, yeah. the first half of the game, but then Norma took the reins again yeah, in the she, same room. She told the girls just to shape up I because they, yeah, and they definitely like, um, did. Yeah, for me, you know, let's also remember this is a World Cup. You know, you, yeah. you can't expect to win a team or to beat a team right from minute one. You know, yes. you don't want that. 
Tonga is the seventh ranked uh, team in the world. Mm. And you know, the first half showed that, but I think we proved our class after that, definitely. Mm. We definitely did. And of course, I think it was so key to bring in Alma Ray. She's the player of the match. We see her shooting those goals, getting them in. Her accuracy was out of this world. Uh, but I really think that she did a really great job. Denise, what do you say as a shooter, actually? As a shooter, I'm very proud of her that mm. she stepped up. Um, last night, I think the nerves got a bit to her in yeah. the Ugandan game because it's that's a way more physical game than um, any other countries or continents that we face. Yeah. Um, so she really stepped up, I think. And I'm saying this, I saw a smile. Yes, we did. I don't smile. She doesn't smile. So when I see she smiles, I'm like, oh my goodness. Yes. Okay, so she took leadership in that circle. Yeah. She said to the players what to do, where to go. Talk to Nicole. Communication is very important. Um, mm. So she's played really well, held strong in that circle, accuracy great so I'm, I'm proud of her yes and she smiled like she knew the player of the match was coming oh <laughs> she played really well she did, she coach did. I'm gonna come to you in a little bit because I want us to just get into a few of the things that we possibly might have done right outside of the circle we've spoken at length about that and I want to get into it but right now we need to go to one of the Tongan players who is in the mix zone at the moment I think we just lose consistency especially in our second quarter we've identified that and in this case, we tried to stay consistent, but we weren't able to, and they just came way too strong. Yeah. You only have one more left. What is something that you're going to take into that last match that you've learned throughout the entire tournament? Staying consistent, just playing the whole 60 minutes, um, and just being an option, staying on D. But yeah, they were a good side. They're such a strong side. But it was a privilege to play against them. What has been your highlight from this World Cup experience? Ah. Uh, Coming to South Africa, I've never been to this part of the world. I've always gone to the islands um, and also taking the court um, with my auntie. She's been pretty mad. Yeah, it's so good. Tell me, what does that mean to you, being able to play with family? Oh, I uh, dream come true. Um, gets me emotional, but just happy that I'm able to take that off my bucket list. Kilia chatting to Joe Prince in the mixed zone. And Denise, I want to ask you, because of course, we spoke about how they were capitalizing on how many balls we were getting to in mm. terms of just getting to the shooting circle. I want to ask you, how did we capitalize on their mistakes? I just think we stick to game plan, giving the short balls when someone was open available. They didn't hover too long with it, looking for other options around. Yes. That's what Norma always says. If you have the option, just give the ball, and then we go from there. We've been talking about giving those drives through the midcourt and bringing down the ball and our mid is just sticking back a little bit. So having space to work in, releasing that ball and just staying calm with yeah. it. You don't have to be impatient. You, three seconds, it is quite long yeah. to have the ball in hand. So you don't have to immediately just hot potato to someone right next to you. You can take your time, see that option, give that option. Yeah, um, yeah so we were patient with the ball cited all the options, gave a better option. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And also, also, did you hear that? That's what Norma says. I can tell she's with Norma every other day. You know yes. what I'm saying? <laughs> I love it. But Alsha, I want to ask you, because coach, you're the person who always has the eye in terms of what we're doing right. So you've spoken about the circle, like I said. We love Pumza. Me and you, I think we're very big fans of her. Yes. Speak to me about the superhero, the way she's been playing, particularly at the end of this match. For me, the role that Punza has played, and I've been speaking at length on her defensive skill, mm. but she ignites our team. Like It seems like she can ignite our team when we really need it most. We were trailing by two or three. She went out on the hunt. She took a fly beautifully. She sent it off. Our center pass, we back you yeah. know, to a, to, a, to a level score. And that she's been doing throughout this whole tournament. Her consistency, she's been really brave there at the back for us. She's been a real warrior, you know. Mm. So besides... I don't want to keep on singing her praises on a defensive skill. We know that that can be. But I also like how she cleaned up her game. She was very costly at the beginning of the tournament. And as we progress, she's less out of play. Yeah. She's a little bit further off the body. And because she's further off the body, she can get around. Um, and I really like, uh, like and appreciate that. And then obviously the connection between her and Carla. Oh, magic. Carla, Carla is a ball carrier for us down the court. She yeah. immediately looks for her. She sends her down the court. And then what Lenisa says, I, I agree with that. Um, is it didn't today rushed into that middle? It was almost that it was a delayed drive, mm. though there was way more space to work. And if we needed it, one either Bongi or is it played into the pocket, 
We got the, the, the link uh, from Nicole in the middle, or Al Marai. We turned around, we looked for the best option, and we played with control. And that was really good today. And, yes. I, and, and, and Tonga struggled with that. You yes, could see really did. that they are a team now that haven't played the, the top countries a lot. Mm. And I'm sure they will improve on that as they go along and as they get more experience. But they were in it for 30 minutes. Yeah. Definitely. 100%. Well, you know what? This is the beautiful thing about being with us here on SABC2. Of course, we are here in the studio. But then we also have got Joe Prince out and about making sure that she's getting all of the interviews that we need and can you such one is the person she's catching up with um it's been amazing um uh, compared to the first world cup knowing that the crowd is on our side and we're not playing against the crowd is really amazing and the fans have been great for us um they pushed us through this tournament and we are here today because they were there for us it was a bit of a shaky start but then closer to the end you guys start pulling away what changed I think um, going into halftime, we really just also spoke to each other to say we need to up ourselves, we need to um, lift the standard. Um, yes, we might um, have not ended well yesterday, but that's what we wanted to fix. And going in today, we didn't want to disappoint ourselves. So everyone just played their part, and that's where we got the results that we got. So now you're going to fifth and sixth. What's the game plan going into that final match? Um, obviously, we are African champs and we're going to go against an African team. So it's probably more personal than it, it's just a game. But um, we played Uganda yesterday and we don't want to end up the way we did yesterday. We started well against them and that's what we want to um, finish off on. Um, and it's the last game of the tournament. We just want to play well and finish off strong. Oh my goodness, you heard it from Kanyusa Chawani, one of our superstars in the SA Pro Tier squad. We are going to be facing an African country on Sunday. And Lenise, I want to ask you very quickly, what do you think we need in order to be able to just one-up Uganda yet again? I think we need composure against mm. that team. They are, like Casey said, we are top um, country in, on the African continent. They are coming for us, definitely. Yeah. Heard that in the press conference as well yeah. from their coach. Um, it's going to be war, it's going to be physical, it's, or even more physical than what it was. So yeah. I think we shouldn't let that get into our heads. They can come and knock us, we're going to take it, we're going to be patient with the ball, we're going to have the composure. Mm. Again, all we have to do is stick to game plan. Yeah. And everything is happening for a reason, there's method behind the madness, what's being told to us. Don't stray from that. So I think. We just have to also take risks because with Mary, she's a tall shooter. Yeah. Like, and it's not easy to get a ball from her. Um, so we have to start doing the work outside the circle first before we just think we're going to get the ball inside the circle. Pumza is amazing. I love her as well. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. But, oh no, I know. Let me just get that straight. No, but it's a trio no, of love. I'll, so much love. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to need all the help we can get, yes. especially in that attacking end, because they also, it doesn't seem like they get tired. Yes. <laughs> they love playing around. They so do. we just need to take those risks to get deflections, intercepts, and capitalize on those turnovers. 100%. And you're so right about them thinking that they are better than us. And I say that in the most, I will say, you know, factual way yes, yes, they yes. honestly go into the match with the best mindset possible mm. to be like listen we're gonna beat South Africa yep. so we need to come back at that honestly and truly and right about now we are going to be getting into what we love to call catching up with the Proteus and Joe Prince does it best in the mix zone Joe what's happening yeah, I think and the changes were made at a very good time. Elmer Ray coming in, I mean, she had a play of the match performance. You can only be proud of that, especially as a youngster coming in. Um, but yeah, I think the players that came on made a big change and they really brought us forward and allowed the players on the bench to go out on court at the last few five minutes. Uh, but yeah, going into the next match, I think we should really focus on getting out of the blocks quicker. I, can't, I don't think we should uh, wait that long before pulling away. Your own personal experience of this World Cup, how has it been for you? Yeah, it's been highs and lows. I've had really good performances shooting in the 90s, then I had those little uh, performances in the 70s. But yeah, um, it's been an experience and something I can learn from. So what has been your highlight of this World Cup? The highlight, what can I say, it should be the New Zealand match. Yes, it wasn't my favourite or my best game, but yeah, it's a great team performance. You can only be proud of that. What would you like to say to the fans? Thank you so much for coming out every game. We've heard you every game. Um, you guys are extremely loud. Everybody's talking about you guys. 
And yeah, we're proud to be playing in front of you guys. And yeah, just thank you for always supporting us. Did you hear Inna Marie? She said that you guys are doing the things that need to be done. And it's not a lie. All of the coaches, all of the players at the 2023 Nepal World Cup, they cannot keep quiet about how South Africa truly gets behind their goals. And we love it. But I want to come to you very quick, coach, because I feel like she said we need to get out of the blocks quicker. And maybe not all of us know what that means. What does it mean? Well, you know, again, you need uh, the first quarter of any game is a game where you get a feel, the rhythm, you start to see what's the calls of the umpires. You need to settle down, but you need to trust the process and you need to trust the players around you. And mm. I think that's maybe what she means with coming out of the blocks faster. They know each other. Our team know each other. They are settled. It seems like the coaches have sorted out who is the starting seven, who's the impact players. Yeah. And now the players need to fulfill those roles. Because the players on court need to produce to allow the coaching staff to make some changes as well. Mm. To bring on the fresh legs, to put the score on the scoreboard and make sure that we can make the changes if needs be. Yeah. But what I really think we need to do on Sunday is we'll need to be really, really close. Mm. Because they will play around like forever. Remember on Sunday it's not about a score. No. It's about a win. Yeah. They, were, they couldn't care less about the, goal, the goals that's on the board. They would just want to win and they just need one for it so they will play. So for me, there's one word that stands out about Sunday and it's about patience. Yeah. Hopefully our defense can stuck it out, stay close enough. They will run out of patience, mm. force those long, long balls in. Kumsa is in front and in the right positions. If she and Carla goes a 50-50 in that circle, yeah. especially against Mary, because you can't go tight on her, you won't get up in the air, then we will have a chance. Mm. and we will beat them 100 uh, but it's gonna take 60 minutes to run them down i love that and 60 minutes is what our girls are ready for especially because they've got an entire team that is behind them i'm not talking about us no we're there as well but of course they have their coaching team and dubisari talk is one of them who's part of it well, basically, uh, we worked on our patience uh, and also converting on our turnovers, which the girls were able to do quite well today. I'm just waiting to see what the official numbers are with regards to that, because, I mean, in our pre uh, previous encounters, we were able to turn the ball, but, however, we weren't converting off those turnovers. So that was one thing that we were focusing on today. And also staying cool, calm and collected, you know, and not, and not, not um, get too far ahead of ourselves and just take it one quarter at a time and make sure we win each and every quarter to stay competitive and stay in the game, because we will be facing a very tough uh, very well prepared Uganda come Sunday so uh, we don't want to leave anything to chance yesterday you played Uganda and you had a big lead losing it a bit at the end what do you think you have to do differently going into the match well one thing that Uganda doesn't do is give away the ball right so uh, they make sure I mean if, if you look at any of their games most of the time possession they they win it by far and also their shooters are quite accurate and they can play a million balls until that ball gets to their shooting circle. So it's about you trying to, to wear them down and also countering their style of play, which uh, by, um, you know, in actual fact is actually not structured netball. They just play the open man. So it's about analyzing or cut, cutting off the individual players and cutting off the supply of the ball to Mary because once she gets that ball in that shooting circle, she's quite lethal. So, yeah, um, making sure we convert over our turnovers and we also keep ball in hand. Go Dubisani, go, go Spa Proteus, go. We had the victory and we get to take it into the weekend. 72-46 up against Tonga. And just like that, we have to say goodbye. Lanise, Alsha, thank you so much. We will see you yet again tomorrow for the semi-finals right here on SABC2. Bye-bye.